Our next speaker is BJ Vau. BJ is from Apple Valley, Minnesota, and a recent graduate from the University of St. Thomas in St. Paul with a marketing degree. BJ's mother was diagnosed with Huntington's disease 14 years ago and currently lives in a county-assisted group home near their family in Apple Valley. BJ and his older sister Emily are at risk for Huntington's and have made the decision to focus their lives on caring for their mother, raising money for medical research towards treatment and for spreading awareness about the needs for HD families. 13 years ago, BJ and his family began, began the Twin Cities Hoopathon that annually now attracts 500 participants and raises over $45,000 every year towards medical research. BJ has been honored by the Minnesota Timberwolves. People don't know it, that uh, used to be a good basketball team. Uh, <laughs> as a hero in the making. Sorry, Martha. Okay. And awarded the Youth Alliance Award at the HDSA Annual Convention in 2000. Awarded the Individual Leadership Award by the Minnesota Chapter of HDSA in 2006. And he's been featured in Sports Illustrated, March 2005, Faces in the Crowd, which honors those who represent the best ideals of sportsmanship. Please welcome me in jo in wel join me in welcoming BJ. How's everybody doing? Good, good. Uh, I first off just want to thank everybody for uh, putting on this conference, um, for Dr. Hayden for the introduction, and uh, for all you ladies for, uh, for telling your story. Um, and also I'd like to thank Dr. Nance. Um, she's the one who kind of got me on board um, with this, so I uh, just had to say what's up, Doc. And um, thank you very much for this opportunity. I've never been to Vancouver or Canada before, so it's been a lot of fun here. Me and my dad went and uh, did the, the Grouse Mountain climb yesterday, so if any of you have a chance. It's a nice uh, little walk and nice little nature walk. <laughs> really easy. Um, give it a try, um, kind of. But uh, it's a lot of fun. So if you have a chance, get up there. Um, I wasn't really sure, um, you know, who's more excited for this talk, me or, or my dad. Um, he loves to do uh, public speaking. So um, when he heard that I had this opportunity, I think he was hoping that I'd, I'd get ill or something. <laughs> So he could come up here and uh, represent me, and he probably has a speech ready in the back pocket. But, um, you know, I live at home now, which is pretty average um, after graduating from college. And, uh, and my dad, we just kick it. But um, he's been bugging me for the past three months. Hey, BG, working on that speech. You know, how's the speech coming? And uh, I, of course, am like, yeah, it's coming great, yeah. So just kind of pushing him off here and there. But, uh, you know, it's, it's coming together. So, Dad, just, just sit down and listen. And, uh, you know, I was originally asked by Dr. Nance, you know, a couple months ago, hey, BJ, you want to you wanna come and talk in front of some people about being at risk? And I was like, yeah, sure, sounds fun, you know, whatever. Um, and I, come to think of it, after I said yes, I was like, well, what am I even talking about? You know, what, what should I talk about? It's like being at risk. And I called Dr. Hayden, and I was like, well, what am I supposed to talk about? And he pretty much is like, well, just tell your story. So I was like, um, okay, I'll just tell my story, I guess. And... Um, you know, I wasn't really sure, you know, what kind of message I want to send. Do I want to make you guys laugh? Do I want to make you guys cry? Do I want to give you some, you know, a powerful message? And, uh, you know, the answer I came up with is I don't really know what I wanted to do. Um, I maybe do a little bit of both. So um, if you hear something funny, laugh. It, laugh. It makes me comfortable up here. Um, never had this big of a crowd before. But, uh, you know, my story is, you know, this is my mom, Debbie. Um, you know, she was diagnosed. She couldn't be with us here today. Um, she's back at home. So I just wanted to Put some pictures of my mom up here. Um, makes me more comfortable. So, hey, mom. Um, she wished she could be here. Um, wrote up all these notes, too. I don't know if I'm going to even use them, but uh, we'll see. You know, I was told to, to get up here and talk like you guys are, are a group of my friends. So, um, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, you know, my mom was diagnosed um, about 13 years ago. I was just a little guy, I was 10 years old. Um, she currently lives right now in a group home, um, which is a great place for her, a great place for any HD patient. Um, you know, it's two miles from my house. It's in the middle of a neighborhood. Um, it was opened up by um, a lady whose um, husband actually has Huntington's, and she's like, well, I don't want him to have to live in a nursing home, so I'm going to open up this house. And now there's two houses, and there's about four HD patients in each house, and they have great care, and we can come and visit her whenever we want. Um, and it's just a great place uh, for her and, uh, and for us, too, who, you know, can't give that, uh, that care that, that's needed at all times. Um, my mom, like I said, was diagnosed, you know, I was 10 years old. I really, I honestly don't even remember um, 
back then. You know, my parents came home from the doctor or somewhere, and I knew they weren't happy, and I had no idea what was going on. Uh, my great, my grandpa, and my great grandma both passed away really before um, I knew anything about Huntington's, and I knew that they had it. So I was unaware of what was going on. You know, I lived a normal life. I was a little kid. I went to school. I played sports. I came home, hung out with the family. You know, nothing was wrong with my mom. She wasn't showing symptoms. Um, so I was, I was pretty confused, and I didn't, I especially didn't know that because she was, you know tested positive for Huntington's that I, of course, was at risk too sometime down the line. The words genetic hereditary meant absolutely nothing to me. Um, so, you know, I think, I don't even remember when my parents told me that I was at risk for this disease. I think I was just kind of like, yeah, whatever. Just let me go play outside or something. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but, uh, you know, a couple, couple months after, you know, they were diagnosed, or my mom was diagnosed, uh, you know, my, one of my parents, I don't remember who, decided to take us to this thing called the Hoopathon. Um, it was put on by the Minnesota chapter of Huntington's, and um, it was, for you, for you guys who don't know what a hoopathon is, it's a basketball fundraiser um, for Huntington's, and people shoot free throws for five minutes to see how many they can make. Just kind of a fun way to, to raise some money, and uh, it wasn't a big event at all. It was probably 50 people, and it was me, my sister, my dad, and a friend, and um, we ended up, you know, raising a couple hundred bucks, and on the way home, as my dad tells it, um, because I like basketball so much, I don't know, just a coincidence back then. I was like, hey, Dad, you know, can we have a hoopathon? And as he tells it, he's kind of thought about it for a second. He's like, I don't, I don't even know what to say. And he goes, sure, let's hold a hoopathon. So we knew absolutely nothing about running an event. We barely knew anything about Huntington's. But we decided that we were going to hold an event. And uh, so about two weeks before, you know, we planned a date. We booked a, booked a gym space. We printed off some flyers. We told all our friends and family. Um, we got into a gym and uh, we shot some hoops for a couple hours and you know when all said and done we really had no idea what we were doing and at the end of the day we ended up raising about six thousand dollars in our first year so uh, we we kind of looked at each other after that and we're like you know we don't even know what we did and we just raised six thousand dollars for this disease so we better do it again I guess so uh, you know then an extra came around and we pretty much did the exact same thing. We, you know, we told everyone we knew, but we told everybody who came last year to bring a friend. So if everyone came and brought a friend, you know, it's got to get bigger, right? We added some new things, and, and it, it grew. And every year for the last 12 years, it's grown and grown and grown. And um, you know, over the past 12 years, um, we've raised over a half million dollars for HD. Um, every year, we raised between, you know, the past five years, we raised between 45 and 50 thousand um, dollars. I don't know where that is. That, is there a clicker around? Oh, there it is. Um, let's see. Ah. Well, whatever. Um, I was just gonna. Sh I don't. Um, these are just some pictures. This is kind of a a picture of a hoopathon a few years ago. Um, it's just kind of how it's set up. You know, we run it. You know, we have a bunch of people standing around who pass the ball to someone shooting, and they just shoot until their arms fall off for five minutes. Um, and it, it's a lot of fun. You know, you, you don't really know um, how many you're going to make, and people can bring pledges either way, either for how many baskets they make or, uh, or that. But um, the best part about holding a hoopathon and having it run is it's a family event. You know, we, we run it um, pretty much my family. My dad is kind of, he kind of did a lot of the work for the first 10 years when me and my sister were smaller, and we didn't really know what to do. Um, but over the past two years, he's kind of stepped down, and now me and my sister, um, you know, we run the event. Um, my sister Emily, she's a couple years older than I am. Um, I have to get a lot, a lot, of, a lot of credit to, to my dad and my sister for, uh, for running it. Um, a lot of times I get a lot of credit for this, for this event because my name's on it, but, you know, without them, um, nothing would ever happen. So um, just got to give a little shout-out to my sister so she knows that I think she does something. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, we do, we do what we want. It's like a family-run business. So every year, you know, we, we think of it as just a lot of fun. We do what we want. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing is, is we keep what works, and we try and add new things. Whatever doesn't work, we get out of there. Um, but, uh, but, you know, it's a lot of friends. We get a lot of our close friends to volunteer. They get involved with HD. They think they're, uh, you know, hey, I'm helping you. So they feel good about themselves. And um, it comes together. And, you know, the best part about it is we probably put in about, you know, three to four months of work, you know, just preparing flyers, t-shirts, you know, all that kinds of that stuff, and uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt sometimes, but when you come to the event and you see people with Huntington's 
put a smile on their face for three to four hours because they know people out there care about them and want to stop this disease. You just can't help but smile, um, and, and it makes it worth every second of the work doing it. And you know, to see my mom come and have all these friends and family give her hugs that usually don't get a chance to see her, it just it makes it all worth um, worth every bit of time you put into it. Um, so what you know, kind of, I'm talking about this hoopathon. You guys may not even know what I'm talking about, but uh, you know, the biggest thing is for our event, we use we use the hoopathon or our fundraisers that we hold as as hope. You know, kind of like Katie was saying, we all need hope that one day this disease isn't going to be here. One day we're we're not going to have these conventions because we're not going to need to find a cure. The cure is going to be here, and we'll just be having a party somewhere or something like that. Um, but the biggest thing that I've realized is that that word hope it 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 costs money. You know, without money we don't have researchers. Without researchers we don't have a cure. So kind of what I wanted to say is we all need to do more to find that find that hope and give hope. You know, if we're a family out there or we're an individual out there at risk or a caregiver, you know, we all need to do something. You know, I, I know a lot of you guys out there might do something now, but a lot of you may not. And, uh, you know, if you're a family, start an event. It doesn't have to be anything great. You don't have to raise fifty to $100,000. Start something. It doesn't have to be a hoopathon. It could be a walk, a run. You could sell coupon books. You can have a, a family dinner. Um, it can be anything, but uh, for all you researchers and doctors out there, we need you just as much. You know, we of course need you to find a cure, but we need you to provide us hope that what you're doing is is you know progressing and you're you're finding things and um, you know things are looking up and just inspire us to to, to raise this money um, and tell us that it's going to good use. Um, we all kind of need to to stick to what we're good at. I know I'm not going to find a cure. I'm not smart enough at all. I've talked to a lot of researchers out there, and every time I get done with a conversation, I'll say, God, I'm stupid. <laughs> but uh, one kind of story I'll just tell real quick. We, uh, we had the chance about you know, four years into our hoopathon to meet one of the doctors, Dr. Janet Dubinsky, who works for the University of Minnesota. And my family goes down there, and we're all excited. You know, We're going to talk to this doctor. And she's all, she's all really excited. And she pulls out the, the human brain and um, starts just rambling on it, all these words I don't understand. <laughs> So about two minutes, and all I really understood is, hey, how are you guys? And <laughs> I, I fell asleep. I'm not going to lie. My parents tapped me on the shoulder before we left, and it's like, time to go. I was like, okay, good. <laughs> so what I've realized is I'm not finding a cure. That's, you know, your guys' job out there. But, you know, what I am here to do is I'm here to raise money, and I'm here to, you know, try and get other people to raise money because without that money, um, you know, we don't have you guys. And without you guys, you know, we don't have a cure, and we don't have a hope you know, to look, to look forward to something. Um, so, you know, I just, I really just want to say, you know, families and, and people out there, if, if you're at risk, it, I know a lot of people out there who are afraid to admit they're at risk or they're afraid to, to really admit HDs in their lives because, I don't know, they're scared or something, but, but not admitting it, I, I don't really think does anything for anybody. It's just, it, you're not going to do anything about it if you just kind of hold back and pretend nothing's there. We all need to get out and do something. And I know a lot of people who, who admit that it's in their lives but are afraid to do something about it. They're like, well, you know, I don't know what to do or, um, you know, I'm not sure how, you know, I can help or how my little fundraiser or how I raise $500 is going gonna, is gonna to help. But everyone's got to do something. No one's going to make fun of you for holding an event for a disease that affects you um, if you're trying to do something good with it. it. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it raises a dollar. It doesn't matter if it raises, you know, $10. It's... It's spreading awareness for disease. It's it's uh, it's raising money, and uh, you know every penny counts is is really the key. So so get up and do something. You know if you're if you're a doctor out there, um, you know keep doing your job. Keep telling us positive things. You know find a cure. Do whatever you want to do. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know people at risk. We we need you guys. You guys are um, you're our, you know our life savior if we have this disease. And I'm at risk. So I've chosen not to test, and I don't know if I have this, but you know, for people out there, you guys need to save our lives. So um, I don't know um, how much you think about that, but you know, every day you're at work. You know, Monday through Friday. I don't know your hours, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, our lives are in your hand, and you know, everything you do, we appreciate all the hard work, and uh, you know, keep uh, keep pushing forward. And I forgot to tell you, but on the ends of each of your table are. Um, like a little stack of business cards there with my contact information. So it, if you're on the end or the end of a row, I kind of threw them all over the place. Just pass those down and just put it in your pocket. Um, 
And, uh, you know, what I wanted to do really with this message is not only tell my story, you know, I'm not preaching that it's the right story, it's the right way to live or anything like that, but uh, I just, I've been told to tell my story, so that's kind of what I'm doing. But uh, what, I, what I want to do now is I kind of want to look at you guys, and you guys all have my contact information, but I want to hear, I want to hear your guys' story. We all need to, to work together and uh, to share what's going on out there, um, you know, around the world. A lot of the times I forget that, you know, the Huntington's affects the whole world. Sometimes I just think it's... It's uh, right in my community or in the HDSA where I'm a part of. Um, but I want to hear, you know, what you guys are doing. I want to hear your ideas. So many, from based on our hoopathon, just it's, um, we've actually, other people have come and they've been at risk or their family and they're, they kind of look at each other and they're like, well, why can't we do something too? And, you know, off that, you know, there was a family there that kind of did that and they ended up having their own family fundraiser where they just, they live in a small city and they hold a dinner and they end up raising about 20 to 30 grand a year just by inviting all their friends, just by coming to a fundraiser and saying, why can't we do that too? Um, a golf tournament, a walk around have also come out of it. I had a buddy who goes to, to school at the University of North Dakota and he calls me this spring and um, he's like, hey BJ, I'm in a class and uh, I got to put on a fundraiser. I want to do a hoopathon. I was like, well, that's cool. He's like, well, what do I do? And I'm like, well, I don't know. What do you want to do? He's like, well, I just thought you'd tell me exactly how to run a fundraiser. I was like, well, you know, there's no magic formula, and we started throwing out ideas, and he ended up coming up with an event that, that is totally different from what we do and what he was familiar with, but they ended up, you know, first year getting 50 people to come to the event and raising four grand, um, and that's just someone who's not really even affected. It's, it's just someone who wanted to do something, and we all need to start, um, you know, doing everything we possibly can, if it's little or if it's big. Um, so really what, what, what I'd like to do is, um, you know, everyone please send me an email, give me a call, introduce yourself to, uh, to me at the conference. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys are doing if you're a researcher. Um, don't get too scientific, just give me a thumbs up or something. <laughs> but uh, if you're not, if you're, if you're at risk, if you're a family member, come, come tell me. You know, I'd love to share ideas, I'd love to, uh, to help you think of something. Um, and I'd love to get your ideas so I can go and spread the word uh, back in Minnesota and, and to, to, whoever, to whoever I know. So. Um, Please do that. Um, I had all these notes and I didn't even use them. So just um, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you very much for uh, letting me have the opportunity to speak with you today. And um, let's, uh, let's find a cure. Thanks. Thank you, BJ. Thank you for inspiring us to action. Uh, I think as scientists, I think we could just got to see our big record is to give any talk and make sure you don't fall asleep. So that's uh, what we would say is a good step forward. Uh,